So this here is the Magic Ram Line Auto Loader. Put your magazine. You probably have to put it in the right way. So much easier. Flawless. This thing's fantastic. Fantastic. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. I think it's pretty sweet. All right, our specialty target today is the NW two liter bottle full of water and two stainless steel corner guards angled down so that as the bullet passes through the water, it's gonna catch the bullet, fling it into the ground. We're gonna recover it and see if we get a perfect mushroom. Now here's some hardwood athletic flooring. It's maple flooring backed by some plywood. Looks like it's uh, two ply plywood and we're gonna see its ballistics properties. Extensive damage to that water bottle. These look like they worked right there. There's a little divot. Okay, so if they were like this, pa-ching! Bolt ended up right here. Oh, crap. We probably could have recovered it, but it looks like uh, sheepdog edit. Well, so much for that idea. Woo, dog. Perfect mushroom. What we have here? 38 Special. It's loaded with 38 Special plus P rounds, but not for long. We're bringing back a good old faithful salt round and a 125 grain XTP. We're going to test the salt round on that there water bottle that's halfway full. Extensive damage. We're going to test out this uh, just regular 38 Special load, the 125 grain bullet. We're going to test it out on the same way they did the 22. And then I put some added wood behind it just in case to slow down the projectile so we hopefully can find it. Look at that. Look at that. Just blew that water bottle apart. Not an ounce of water left in the bottle. And we did recover this perfect mushroom. Look at that. Deadliest mushroom. In the desert. Did you find another one? Okay, there's our recovered 38 special. And interestingly enough, it looks like it hit something flat after it penetrated the bottle. You don't say. Now we got the SXP. We've got Remington High Brass. We've got Universal Target Shot. And then we got this beautiful tactical slug. Now this time we're gonna take another beauty of a gun. A beautiful specimen. A 22. Dead center. I'm so proud of you. Let's go check out the damage. Entered there. And you're right. No exit. All right, this is safe. If you are ever in a uh, world of hurt, you need a place to hide. You just make sure you're behind some uh, hardwood floor covering, athletic floor covering. You're going to be all right as long as they're shooting a 22. Here we are back with the Smith & Wesson 638. Our first shot's gonna be this 125 grain hand-loaded XTP. I think that's a 110 grain hydro suck. And this is a 135 grain gold dot hollow point plus P. Against our tactical flooring. Blew the rubber right off. Man, this one powerful bullet. Entered right here, exited right, oh wait, it didn't, right there. Okay, let's try that one more time. Let's see how she fared. Look at that, amazing. There's her second hit. Still did not penetrate. This thing's withstood three lead projectiles shooting at high velocities. That is simply outstanding. Here's the most powerful of all the loads. This thing is gonna go right through it. Look at that. Punched a hole, just like the others. 357 in diameter, but it did not penetrate all the way through. 
So we have determined this is probably the most safe media to stay behind if you're playing basketball or in a gym and there's danger present. Look at that, 22 bullets, 38 special, one of the hardest bullets to shot, stop. We don't want to let these go to waste. So we're going to also shoot those two with uh, probably that first round. We're going to hit this with target load first. Now what you're going to notice with this SXP shotgun is the way it's designed it has a, a rotary lug, locking lug system in it. So I'm going to shoot this at that target you know, without holding the pump grip right here. We're just going to shoot it and you'll be able to see this will actually just open itself. That's one of the features that this gun has. They call this the fastest pump in the world. Oh yeah, baby. Check it out. This is how it was at after I shot. It's already opened up. All I gotta do is push that up in and it's ready to shoot. Look at the carnage. My goodness. Whoa. Yep, look at that, stopped every last one. This stuff's better and better the more I see it. Ooh, look at that. But well, we won't have to take this back to the ranch to find the bullets. This high brass. It's impressive, but yet nothing, nothing made it through. You know what that tells me? That just confirms this is the greatest flooring ever made, made by man. The big mamma jamma. Fantastic hit. Okay, now we know if they got 38 or 22 stand behind the flooring. If they got a 12 gauge, you might be safe unless they got themselves a tactical slug. This is that gold dot hollow point. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. Our two bullets are still in there. Our 22 lead may be, may be down for the count. Nope, look at that, right there. Days are here again. Now let's go look. Man, there is stuff scattered everywhere. Who would have thought? I never would have imagined in three or four years something like this had happened. Now that flooring definitely slowed that down considerably. So one of these bullets started shooting out stuff. I was standing there, couldn't figure out what was spraying me all over. There's a pinhole in the bullet itself and the lead built up enough pressure to start spraying out. That's probably why you should always wear uh, eye pro when you're doing this and be careful. So on these plated bullets here, as they heated up, they actually built up pressure inside and some of them had pinholes and would shoot lead. You can see some of the remnants on the table right here, but they would shoot little strings of lead out. So to resolve that, I'm just gonna put them in my pliers and then just break the seal on them just enough that I can get the lead out. What you doing, Bluefish? Uh, so I put it in my mouth because I don't want to smell it. You don't want to smell the toxic fumes of lead? This is one of those items where the proper equipment is essential. The measuring spoons doing this. When you use your wife's tools and you you burn up the dog's dish for something stupid like this, but this isn't you don't get brownie points for that, gentlemen. Your 
fingers just a little, a little toasty there. Yeah. Right, the other thing, you need to make sure that you go through to clean up your surf work surface. No evidence left behind. Now when handling lead, it's important not to let it touch your skin. I've been messing around with lead for a long time. It hasn't affected me. Just to be safe, yeah, don't ever uh, touch lead handle with your fingers. Don't shoot it out of guns. Don't do anything with lead. Stay away from it. By the way, it is known to the Republic of California. To cause cancer. Y yeah. Look at this, they had a nice tight group. They had a lot more powder behind them. They, they penetrated a lot farther. The regular buckshot was just for target loads. Made it about, I don't know, what was that? About half an inch or so. Or for you uh, Canadian types, made it about three millimeters into that piece of wood. So here we have a 5.56 five, millimeter projectile, commonly known as the 22. Okay, well, that's a 36 grain bullet. Our rate of tension on that was 34.6. And so we lost about uh, 34.5. Anyway, not a big deal, but we lost about a grain and a half. On average, it penetrated the same depth as all three of the 38 special rounds. But look at the performance of this thing. Now granted, it was going probably twice as fast, maybe not quite twice as fast. But you ended up at its narrow spot. You've got 9.23 millimeters. You're almost double expansion there. And then at its widest point, you've got 13 millimeters. So I'd say the, the performance is really good. Now, the 38 Special is basically 9 millimeter, right? 9 millimeters, 0.355 inches. So you just got just over 9 millimeters there. And that's your starting point. On the gold dot, you got a 135 grain bullet. But even with that little tiny bit of wood in there, you got 134.4 grains still. So it had 99.9% .9 weight retention on that. It's now 13.5 millimeters at its widest spot. It's narrowest spot. You've got half a millimeter expansion there. About 9.6 millimeters. On the 110 Hydroshock, you got 100% weight retention right there. Eleven point five millimeters at the widest and nine point five at the narrowest. For the 125 grain Hornady XTP, ten point six five millimeters at the widest spot spot. And it actually it's it's actually narrowed the whole thing down. It got smaller. A nine millimeter now you're about 8.7 millimeters the gold dot still did perform better as far as more expansion a little more jagged deformity but it didn't have the same penetration as either of those bullets which shocked me for the water bottle shots that we took luckily we were able to do those in a controlled environment so we lost what 18.3 grains of weight but look at the expansion on that i mean that's just magnificent I mean, could you imagine a dead leader mushroom? Hornady, they're probably gonna want me to become a bolestician for them. That would be my dream job. I'm fully qualified for it, as you can see. Its expansion, we have 1.9 millimeters. This narrowest spot, we've got 1.57 millimeters. It's not too shabby. On the first shot that we did today, the water bottle. So you got 31.4 grains. So we'll call it 31, so it lost four grain, uh, five grains, but it expanded to 13.55 millimeters at its widest spot and 8.82 millimeters at its narrowest spot. Well, from range scrap to hardwood crap, we had a great day. And it looks like sheep dogs eating a piece of dead coyote. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Wish I could be him. They won't let me in Europe because I don't know how to read these stupid calipers right here. <laughs> All right, it's his best side. <laughs>